Welcome to the beautiful city of Prague in the Czech Republic. It's April the 6th. This is Glenn Latimer along with Jim Mobley. He'll be bringing, together we'll be bringing you the race. It's just a fabulous day here in Prague and uh, of course this wonderful picturesque city is completely showcased in nice sunshine. The weather is between 12 degrees and 14 degrees Celsius with 64% humidity, some sun, some clouds, it couldn't be better for running. Uh, wind at seven kilometers an hour maximum, so just beautiful. We're always at the, at the behest of the, of the weather, but today looks like the uh, gods are smiling on us. And the elite runners getting lined up now for introductions, well, here we are in Jan Palak Square, right in the center, very close to the old town of Prague. Alexander Sitkovsky, Bernard Kameli. Last year's winner, Bernard Kameli, he's got Bernard on the front. We'll uh, be introducing the runners uh, and identifying them once we get going. Conditions are good, just for information, the course records here is 50 on the screen now, the world record, and then the best from this year. Um, the course record 5847 from 2012, a long time ago. Here's a list of some of the past winners, some great athletes there. Uh, Tamara Tola did that race basically by himself. He went through 10K and decided it wasn't fast enough and he took off and he ran the last 11 all by himself and still got under one hour. We have five guys in the starting lineup uh, who have uh, run under one hour, which is a sort of real mark of excellence and a really high class women's field as well. We've got paces in the here. Um, it's important for the racers uh, and for the event organizers to produce very fast times. They like that. So that's uh, beautiful crisp numbers they have there in this uh, presented by the sponsor, Sportissimo. Nice and clear to read. They have their names on the front and their numbers on the back. There's only one pacemaker for each group, so you don't have the uh, allowed three pacemakers, but... Uh, 11,500 starters in this event, 78 different nationalities, and 60% of the, 67% of the runners are men and 33% are women. But that number is uh, growing uh, participation of women is growing all the time yeah there are races in the US as you know that are more women than men yes and uh, particularly in the key demographic that uh, the advertisers and promoters uh, all want to target this 28 to 40 year old group uh, people with what they call disposable income. It's not a concept you and I are familiar with, Jim, but <laughs> some people uh, like that idea of disposable income. Boy, what a beautiful city. Here we are, Old Town Square, highlighted here from the helicopter. Yeah, we got good aerial shots and good weather for them today, this morning. Yeah. And we'll be back in one month for the uh, Prague Marathon, uh, right there in the Old Town Square, start and finish. We're here next to the Rudolfinum, which is a uh, older uh, concert hall. And it kind of serves as the headquarters for the elite athletes, for the press, press conference. The guy with Stephen on his name is uh, Stephen Kiprop. He's one of the favorites. He's run the fastest time in the year so far this year. He's already run 58.42, so he's... Uh, He's feeling uh, confident that he can uh, get somewhere like in that range again here. He did that earlier this year and uh, 
If he does that, then he'll break the course record, for which obviously there are incentive, financial incentives. Yeah, and that record stood since 2012, as I think you mentioned. So that's uh, a fairly old one by our standards. You can hear the helicopter roaring ab above, which is going to give us beautiful shots as the runners pass through the city. Quite a strong international feel. You can just see Amy Craig there on the second row in red. Uh, the Bowerman uh, Track Club. Right? Yeah, yeah, coached by Jerry Schumacher, uh, one of the top coaches in the world. Also, Diane Nakuri there in the yellow, uh, former Burundian, now qualified to represent the USA. And we have several of the athletes who have come from other countries and now are going to represent new countries. Carolyn Kip Karui is now representing Kazakhstan. Getting a quick look at the course here. We go, I think we cross the river. The Vlatava yeah. six times, five bridges. Yeah. And we go past the famous Charles Bridge that everybody knows, all the tourists. So it's a big long loop and what little wind there is will be, be behind them as they come into the finish. Right. Uh, so that'll be good. From about 15 kilometers, if there is any wind, it, it should be helping. Yeah. And the up course. on the hill, the cathedral and the castle. Look at the street now, full of people. We're right by the river. Which you have to do in Prague because that's the only flat areas in the city. You know, there are hills on both sides. Yeah. We're in this valley. and So you court the course. Lashek has uh, planned the course along the river. Just wonderful conditions today, about three minutes to the start of the race. Abel Kachamba, number six, we'll see him uh, shortly. I'm sure they'll show him in the start lineup. He's just come back from a training stint at the US Olympic uh, Training Center in San Diego, and they love the San Diego weather. Uh, two which months, is all, yeah. two months they were there. Yeah, so an interesting, uh, their man the management there, uh, divorce of Ija and it uh, took I think six or eight guys over there and spent two months there training. Here's the women's field Fancy Chemotai is the uh, probably the favorite we're in F1 Carolyn Kir Kip Karui now with Kazakhstan Lorna Salpeta now from Israel well, Laura's been there Lorna's rather has been there for ten years so she's not yeah. one of these most recent yeah refugees yeah. from Kenya. Mm -hmm. She's she's married to a Israeli man yeah. and has a son and, and yeah. lives over there. Yurka yeah. Homolach, the number yeah. one Czech man. Yeah. But he's a couple minutes behind the Kenyans. Of course there are financial incentives for the Czech runners to be the top three Czech runners and we'll go through till the award ceremonies afterwards in the broadcast. There's Vashlev Strivenek, our race director, just walking by. Camera's gonna zoom in now on some introductions. Felix Kibitok, one of the favorites. Riding the bus to the start this morning, Jim, we met a guy from England, from Telford in England, and completely excited to be here, never been to Prague before, and I think he's going to have a wonderful experience being out there in uh, this beautiful city. We certainly okay. hope so. We're getting ready now. Everybody hands on watches. <laughs> Probably about a minute from the start. I'm not sure where they start their watches when they get yeah. an exact time from the timers, but. Probably just to get the split time so they can check. The lady in white there clapping is Eva Verbkova, the Czech record holder. 
talked to her this morning. She's got an Achilles problem, which has put her out of the event for a while, out of running for a while. This is a scary injury. Yeah, just takes a long time to get healthy again. If if you do, yeah. And across the, we always have this discussion about going over cobblestones and tram tracks, and you always maintain it makes no difference, Jim. And well, I'm always I'm, surprised they run so fast here. That's that's my point. Uh, I mean, you know, if they do poorly, they blame it on the cobblestones. If they do well, they say they didn't matter. So look at the course records. Yeah. Which are, as you said, 58-47 yeah. and 105-42 or 104-52. Oh. Yeah. Looks like we're already splitting into groups. Yeah. Just a sea of color and uh, a lot of very fit looking people I notice when we come to Europe. It's not like the some of the charity runners you see in some of the major marathons around the world who are not in the best shape. The, these guys, well, we've started very seriously here. These guys are motoring along. They're going to go at, uh, they're going after the course record, obviously, but they're, uh, they're going to run like 247 per kilometer, something like that. Which translate to, they want to be under 28 minutes at uh, 10K. If you can translate that, that's a distance that relates to most people. So, and very quickly, the lead group with the pace has, uh, has separated itself. Yeah, how many elite runners would be happy to have a 27.50 yeah. yeah. 10K? And these runners who are crossing the line now are looking at their watch and starting it just so they can monitor how they're doing. But their time is taken by the chips that they have. Uh, the timing transponders that uh, monitor what they uh, are doing and it starts when they cross the line the time stamp is put on there and uh, again when they finish so they'll get their net time in the end the time they from when they started to when they finished we didn't mention the music ah of course <laughs> we have smetna's famous uh, Homage to the river here. The Vltava. Yeah. And, uh, or the Moldau, as the music if, is called. Yeah. If you're German. Yeah. <laughs> we see the blue vest there, Jim. A famous run check team, which is really, uh, I suppose, in American terms, uh, a farm team uh, helping to produce good, great future athletes. Uh, it gives them uh, some of these young yeah. men uh, yeah. an opportunity uh, to train with the best uh, they get some equipment from adidas some help from adidas and then eventually when they uh, produce some results they move up to uh, adidas athlete yeah. and get their full-time contracts so this is the 21st year of this sportissimo prague half marathon and uh, 25 years of Brunchek itself, uh, the group founded by Carlo Capalbo all that time ago, and uh, he had a vision. You can see the beautiful Charles Bridge there, highlighted in the center. We run past it, we don't go over it yeah. uh, this year. Beautiful morning, just oh. breathtaking. And fortunately, the temperature's not too bad, so for a half marathon, I think 12, 14 is pretty good. Yep. And this music, of course, very important and emotional for the Czech people. It's almost like a national anthem, uh, in a sense. It's part of a suite called My Country, and uh, very, very popular.
I don't know what that says, but... Uh, it looks Polish to yeah, me. Yeah, it looks Polish to me, too. Yeah. That's Carolyn Kipkarui with a pacer. And I need to get oriented here as to whether she's leading or if she's... Uh, I don't know. Behind uh, Fancy I Chematai. I, I suspect she's behind Fancy, yeah. but uh, the camera may not have picked that up yet. Yeah. I'm really interested in seeing how Amy Craig does because mm -hmm. she had a, just a super Tokyo Marathon last year. Oh, she ran su stupendously well. She ran 221. Run, yeah. You know, made her the fifth yeah. best, fastest American in yeah. history. So yeah. she's uh, here this today with her husband, Alistair Craig, a former top athlete himself, and uh, her manager, Tommy Ratcliffe. Uh, yeah, Alistair, I didn't know until this trip, but ran 13:03 for 5,000. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's a great athlete, Alistair. He said, "Now he's." Uh, the only person he runs with these days is with Jerry Schumacher, the coach, <laughs> just to Can't keep, keep the up. Shalane yeah. Flanagan and uh, and Amy and the girls are too fast for him, I guess. Yep. I never get tired of uh, the view of this city. It's just spectacularly beautiful. And of course, I don't know how many gazillion tourists come here every year to enjoy the delights of the Czech Republic. Well, it's one of the uh, pleasures of our modern age. and. Uh you know, to be able to travel to Paris or Prague or New York. Moses Kibet, who is running up the front, is uh, from Uganda, and he is, uh, I would say, exceeding his uh, expectations here. He's a, just a sub. 28 minute Tenge guy, 27.56 is his best, but he's run just 61.37 for the half marathon. So he's uh, he's in for a shock maybe later, or he's gonna surprise us because he's probably running at the pace of his personal best for 10K and then they're gonna do that again. But maybe he got encouraged by the world cross country where the Ugandans oh, killed it. The Ugandans just performed excellently. I. Uh, I just spent yesterday uh, in Milan at a co running conference with uh, Jakob Larsson, who produced that uh, event for the Danish Federation, and uh, just a, a man of great vision. Now is our lead women, we think. Carolyn Kipkarui was leading with Fancy Chematai. I don't see Fancy. No, sorry. I think, I think the cameras have missed Fancy. I, I think she's further on. I, I do. She has short hair, yeah. and she looks yeah. not too easy to pick up. I suspect they aren't yeah. even seeing her. But there's Lona, the Israeli, yeah. and Caroline. Yeah. And Lydia Matatai in the green. And I would think that Fancy Chematai is further along the road, and the camera guys haven't realized that she's further ahead. But that's what we expected to happen, at least. Okay, yeah. time to cross the river. For the first few times. Yeah. Fortunately, these bridges don't have uh, a big uh, slope no. up or slope down. No, like it's not Verrazano Narrows Bridge. No, 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 not at all. Matter of fact, the biggest hills on this course are going under a couple of the bridges yeah. and then coming back out of those tunnels. Yeah. There in the blue, uh, in probably seventh or eighth place, is Abel Kipchumba, who's just the one we referenced, just returning from uh, training in San Diego, 
We'll see if that uh, did him a pile of good, which I think it probably will. Well, I wonder about the not being at altitude. You know, usually they, they're coming straight from altitude in, in Kenya, in Iten, or wherever. And uh, theoretically, that's supposed to help. But San Diego, of course, is, is at sea level. I think it was just nice training weather and a cultural thing. Uh, talking to their manager, they they quite... Uh, it was a big shock for the Kenyans to be there and uh, find the, the great American hospitality, people bringing them welcome gifts and cakes, and hopefully they didn't eat too many cakes. There's uh, Yurka Homolaj and yeah. Andy, uh, Andy Wacker, I believe. is. Yeah, Andy Wacker, who's yeah. an American, 103 American. Yeah. So these are, there, there should be a group of around 103, some Europeans yeah. and... There's a lot of uh, guys like making the trip because they get a chance to run on a f very fast course and maybe run a personal best time. Still, people haven't crossed the start line, which is why the transponder system is important to give everybody uh, an individual time. As we get closer on the running clock in the corner of the screen, 14 minutes or under that is what we'd look for at the five kilometer point and hopefully we get to see that at the lead men and i think uh, our system is geared to give in some graphics on the screen to show uh, the particular split times and we can project from that as eva vrabkova again Along with one of the council members who fired the gun. Yeah. Have a new mayor in Prague now. Though. Yes. <laughs> Moses Kibet is uh, intent on right going in with her. The, yeah, yeah, he's going with the paces. He's uh, must be feel a little warm because one pacer there was chucking water on his head. A big discussion going on with the leaders. The guy who looks completely relaxed is Stephen Kiprop in the white vest right in the middle. He just, under no stress, he's going to let the pacers do the work and worry about things in the second half of the race. I would say uh, Felix Kibitad also looks pretty yeah. comfortable. I have an interest uh, in some of these guys because they're going to be paces for us in uh, London Marathon ah. in uh, three weeks' time. So Stephen Kiprop and Felix Kibitak are going to appear and uh, hopefully uh, do a nice job for us. Their introduction to the to the big time. Yes. The guy in the blue and near the back has a, a name to remember, Henry Rono. Yeah. Uh, not the same Henry Rono as we knew before. Okay, now. That's that group of... Uh, we believe that's the second group of women and... Lydia and Lucy. Yeah, and Carolyn and Lona. Lucy Chariot, I believe, is uh, part of that group with yeah. Davor, uh, Sevilla. Well, there's the lead pace car for the women. The key is the lead. Uh, motorcycle with well, uh, Desana on it, uh, leading the first women. Yeah. Caroline looks like she was yeah. taking a nap. Here are the the family event. Well, these are people who run. These are charity people. They run with these kids who aren't able to run. 
give them an experience of running around the course in their chairs. Someone did a nice design with those shirts with yeah. the heart on the back. Very nice. So they can switch off yeah. and uh, help push those chairs around the course. Nine people there, and I think uh, two of those are pacemakers, so... Just always amazed at how these guys barely touch the ground, just like so so light when they run. Oh, Moses well, having a little discussion about uh, is this <laughs> fast enough for you to the pacer? Maybe you could say three pacemakers. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the. Well, Moses might surprise us. He uh, he looks very comfortable with this pace. He's smiling and talking, chatting yeah. away. <laughs> The others think that's uh, a little bit quick, so. Moses Kibet from Uganda. Mm. Certainly the, uh, the success of the Ugandans in uh, Aarhus at the World Cross Country, which was just a fabulously produced event, uh, an event that was basically on life support, uh, just dying in globally and then uh, thanks to Jakob Larsson and his team they were able to bring it back and uh, inject some life into it hopefully that continues in the future uh, two years from now it's a every two year event now a full 180 degree turn here about six kilometers into the run just yeah. passing six kilometers 15 to go. We haven't been able to get any splits yet, so I don't have a feel for how fast, other than the I'm fact that the guys like uh, oh, Bernard uh, Camelli, the last year's winner, join in the front now, so he's time to get serious. He's in fourth place. And Jeffrey Koech. Yeah as well. He's another sub one hour yeah. runner, 59.50 is his PR. Well, interesting there, which you just saw is Stephen Kiprop, the pre-race favorite probably, is uh, along with uh, Bernard Camelli, who was just off the back of that. Uh, Maybe here we might get a chance to see the lead women. Well. That's Caroline again, I believe. Yeah. But where is the motorbike with the sauna? That should determine yeah. the first woman. There, yeah, it just went ahead. So, okay, so the question is, well, no, what that I'm might be a camera. Man. Oh, it could be. Maybe something happened and we weren't informed before the start about uh, the pre race favorite, uh, Fancy Chimatai. She could almost be running with that group of European men. Yes. <laughs> you know, be lost in that mm -hmm. group. Well, the sort of pace that her management was talking about, that would put her with those top European men. Right. So. Which okay. seems a bit foolhardy, but uh, who knows? They've settled down a little bit now, and... Uh, the group that was elongated has come together again. So Stephen Kiprop. Seven kilometers. Yeah, back into the race. Yeah. 
They're still on pace for a sub-59 at this point. Okay. Which is a little frightening, but, uh, you know, when there's that big a group yeah. and they're, they're running at that pace. I would think there's been some surging going on because they were, there's the pacer explaining to people that, you know, this is, this is the pace we're on. Yeah. <laughs> So you got Steven back up there right where he yeah. belongs, right behind the pacemaker. I would venture to suggest that uh, the racing hasn't begun yet. That'll exactly. happen way exactly. later in the race and then we'll get down to business. We saw that last year in, remember watching uh, Ronix Kipru Kipruto and right. what a wonderful performance he did and uh, with some uh, some wonderful talent. Uh, oh, he was sixth in, uh, in Denmark for the World yeah. Cross. And, and then, he was with that pack, uh, the uh, lead yeah. pack sort of for most of the race. I'm always amazed at just the sheer speed when you see the camera work in uh, World Cross Country was just fabulous, as this camera work is also fabulous. And you, you get some idea of just how, uh, how fast these guys go. interlude here. Yeah. I hope you're not going to sing, Jim. No, no, no. I have to get paid. Yeah. That's the lead women's group again. That's Caroline again. Yeah. There's Fancy. Uh, she's Fancy's right there. Her, okay. Yes. So Fancy's uh, saying Lona. Yeah. All right, we could have ourselves a yeah. race here. Finally, we got to see the name and so f Fancy doesn't have any hair extensions in like we usually see. That's what well, confused us. Caroline. Yeah. yeah. But Fancy's bigger. She's taller, yeah. she's heavier. Well, this is quick because uh, the information that uh, somebody was saying that uh, Carolyn wasn't in shape would appear, appear to be incorrect. That's uh, correct. One of the said, managers yeah. was, was saying, no, nah, she's yeah. overweight. Yeah. Not ready. Well, I've, I haven't seen too many overweight uh, Kenyans. But, uh, <laughs> not until they retire yeah. from running and join the yeah. Federation. Then they get oh. overweight. You shouldn't talk about my friend Ibrahim Hussein like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's 11. Then one guy dropping off the back at the moment. I think, uh, I think that's Philemon Maritime who's dropping off the back a little bit. This is a good shot of people going over the bridge and the elite. Uh, men going under the bridge. Yeah, they're on their hill work right now. Yeah. They've got to come up, yeah. get back on the level. Yeah. <laughs> Quebec should get a uh, pacemaker's uh, paycheck or something there. Yeah. He's doing his work. Grabbing the drinks and Thirsty work today. Yeah. But the the temperature is good. This is, uh, you know, 12 to 14 degrees Celsius is fabulous. And only seven kilometers an hour wind is negligible. And the humidity is at 60, 64%. So that's nothing to trouble anybody. Nice 
another bridge to go under and mm. come back yeah. up again. So the athletes certainly talk to the pacers and they, they've told them what they want beforehand, but in the race they're going go, go, go. And they, uh, they've got a, a break now on pre-race favorite Fancy Chemitai, who was seeded number one, uh, wearing F1 uh, on her back. But these are not exactly uh, back of the Packers no. here. Lona and Caroline both have pretty strong yeah. credentials. Yeah. Well, Lona's 106.40 this year. And I think she's in better shape yeah. than that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we finally got the close-up camera to, uh, work to answer the question of where was Fancy, because uh, we weren't seeing her in the previous camera shots. Right. There's, There's Igor Olafarenko running right behind Yuri Homolac. And... Uh, Frenchman I think Felix Boer. You certainly get a sense of the pace there from that uh, vehicle yeah. right behind them. It's a bit like when they show the Tour de France and they put the cameras right behind them and you realize how fast and what it feels like to be in a group like that. Looks and like those we guys were not the leaders. They no, were no, no. They were they're running 103 probably. Uh, yeah. Over the bridge again. A different bridge this time, I think. Yurka, Yurka has uh, wanted to break 103, so yeah. that's his goal for today. Yeah. But he just got back from a training camp in Eton. Okay. Oh, he's training in Kenya. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there were yeah. four, four Czech boys yeah. that all training over there. They love it. Starting to get serious and we should be getting very close to 10K any moment now. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on. Hopefully we'll see that. Yeah. Bernard, uh, Stephen, the, yeah. the main players are yeah. still there, which is significant. Just after they make that turn, we should be hitting yeah. 10K right there. Everybody's looking at their watch, so. Yeah. Good group of local folks and yeah. tourists out on the, along the course which is really nice. We've been watching yeah. some races in the past few weeks and you don't see anyone. No. Yana was in China two weeks ago. No one on the course, zero. So in the, uh, right behind the pacer in orange is Carolyn uh, Kipkurui, who, uh, would certainly be one of the favorites, in my opinion, along with Lona Salpeta. Kellen Krupkarui won the uh, race last year here in the Grand Prix 10K in 3019, which is not hanging about for a lady in uh, 10,000 meters. Oh, she's a 105.07 yeah. personal best. I mean, yeah. that's... No, she's, she's all quality, and Lona Salpeta Israeli Sportswoman of the Year and uh, European Champion at 10,000 meters. She is getting better and better. Even yeah. though she's in her 30s, she's yeah. still improving. Yeah. And I would not be surprised to see her run in that yeah. 105, yeah. under 106, let's put it that way. Well, this is uh, getting down. There's a couple of guys being thrown off the back of this group, which is the normal attrition that you'd expect to see. So getting down to business now. Fortunately, the pacemaker is still hanging in yeah. there. 251 per kilometer, which uh, puts them right on this. Yeah. 
right uh, right soft, uh, soft near, near us at the finish at the moment and uh, going over the river heading towards the cathedral and uh, what a view that is now the castle is up yeah. there and they're going to head down towards the parliament uh, back up So there's the Charles Bridge you spoke about earlier. So the estimate is that they're right on the course record pace. So, and I still would maintain they haven't started racing yet. They're still letting the pacer do the stuff. And uh, when they eventually drops out, then we'll get down to business. Here's 10K, 28.18 as the split. Yeah, so they're on a low 59 pace at that yeah. point. Probably about a 59.15. The so men. they're sub hour, but they're not uh, near the course record. But they're that not. could, of course, change in the second half. And there's enough guys still there to produce a fabulous race. Looked like about six men still in that yeah. lead pack, uh, including the one pacemaker who's doing mm -hmm. a good job. Some of the pack. Is, uh, and there's Homolach. The Frenchman, Boer, and uh, Homolach, and he's... You said his goal was to try and get under 63 he, if he, he can. He wants to yeah. break 63. Yeah. That's his goal. Well, and we'll see what uh, benefit he got out of uh, his trip to E10 in Kenya and train at the camp. Uh, uh, well, there's, uh, one of the pacemakers yeah. has stopped. His... Uh, that's uh, Zabion Chumba. Uh... So now we're down to business. Stephen Kiprop, Bernard Camelli, the two favorites with Felix Kibitok right behind him. Can't see who that, Jeffrey. That's uh, Jeffrey uh, Coach. Coach. I'd say the guy in the white's gonna win, Jim, <laughs> in the white vest. I know, there's still one run check yeah, racing yeah. vest back there in the blue. But I think you're right. It's, uh, it's down to those white Adidas yeah. vests. Yeah. Interestingly enough. And Caroline is carrying on by herself. Yeah. Well, let's see this camera angle. If they'll pull out a little bit, we'll see what happened to our other two ladies that were there. Lona Salpeter. Whoa, she's dropped right back. Yes. This is Caroline going for it then. Caroline says, this is my course. Yeah. You don't mess with me here. Pace is doing a nice job. Just look at his uh, his hands. He's pointing where she should go and uh, helping her that way. 11K they just passed. 34 minutes flat. That's uh, 105.20 or something, the pace they were on. Excellent. She's running that long stretch where there is some cobblestones, yeah. but uh, there's, there's only probably 800 meters worth of cobblestones yeah. in the whole course. It's a little bit of uphill for them. They're turning on to one of the bridges again. Yeah. Oh, heading down. That, yeah, they, that's the section, the long section. They're on the other side of the river now. So Bernard Camelli's best, 59.47. Stephen Kiprop's best, 
both from this year. Felix Kibitok's best, 59.21, also from this year. And Jeffrey Kowich, his best, 59.50, from some time ago, not this year. So all sub one hour guys in that front four are gonna battle for the title, we would think. That's what uh, the elite athlete coordinator is hoping for, I'm yep. sure. And they just look under control. They don't look like they're racing. If you were gonna predict, you'd probably think that uh, Jeffrey Coe should be the next to yes. drop off because he looks like he's breathing heavily and hanging on, whereas the others look just like Stephen poetry in like motion. For Oh, Sunday run, you know, it's nothing. Stephen Kiprop just looks like he's smiling and enjoying it. Bernard Kimmel is an interesting guy. He uh, he races and trains in Japan. Right? Yes. Yeah. He's, he's uh, won the race last year, so yeah. he's defending champion, so yeah. he's got some, yeah. some uh, mm -hmm. money in this race. And he... Uh, trains and runs with the Fujitsu group in Japan. Well, the Japanese system is to have corporate sponsorship of teams and it's, uh, it produces uh, a lot of great athletes and uh, they often take uh, various foreign athletes as well on the teams and uh, Carolyn looked, uh, normally she runs with her arms up high and looks like she's under stress but I guess you would be under stress at that sort of way. 30.54 at 10K, which is pretty impressive. If 31.04 is five minutes per mile pace, uh, so that's under five minutes per mile pace if uh, you want to translate that into what you might go out and run a 10K for. So I wouldn't. I yeah. wouldn't. So that's 105.15 or something like that as a projection. Actually, it's faster than that. 10K. Or oh, maybe, maybe you're right. Mm. Hate to admit it. I know, maybe well, you're right. it ain't the first radio I've been to, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> As we started to suggest, uh, the first guy who'll struggle to hang on to this pace is Jeffrey Koech, and uh, it's back to Henry Rono, the different Henry Rono. The, the other Henry Rono is still in the U.S., I yes, believe. Yes, yeah, still works in a uh, as a parking lot attendant now, and wonderful stories of money he's got hidden and buried all over Europe and forgotten about and uh, just kind of sad really because he uh, had a lot of battles and de with the demons of alcohol. Yes. And, uh, it was yeah, he looks good here. He I does. Say, yeah. Did you say that was Sitkovsky with him? No, that's uh, Bohr, I believe, the Frenchman. Oh, yes, right, right. You did say that. Felix Bohr. Yes. Number 29. Whose best is 29.35 at uh, 10K and 104.20. So either he's running a big personal best or... Uh, or Yurka is, yeah. is slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. They just passed 13K, I believe. Yurka has no finishing speed. He, he, he cannot run, you know, he cannot sprint if he gets down to that, but he, he is strong and he can really plow away at it. Still got, still got the foursome, the fearsome foursome. Now it's Steven on the back of this four. Yeah. Good looking group though. Very good. Less than uh, about 19 minutes of running left. The 
like to see what the other women are doing. I'm particularly interested in Amy Craig if yeah. the, they could get a shot of her, see where she is. Well, she's not going to run a spring marathon, so this is just part of her uh, normal. Maybe she's going to go have a track season. I'm not sure. Yes, she uh, is, yeah. and she's concentrating on next year. The Olympics in Tokyo and her success yeah. in, in Japan, and her PRs not only in the marathon but in the half are mm -hmm. both from Japan. She loves running over yeah. there. Marigami, I think she did her half marathon yeah. PR. Well, they they do do wonderful races in Japan, well presented, well organized, as are the, all the run check races there. They have a great team here who produce fabulous races. Look at these views. Uh, it must be the red roofs, I think, the red tile roofs that make it look so wonderful. These guys not moving quite as fast as 247 per kilometer, but still going well. They would certainly beat both of us. Every now and again, you'll see the flags on the back of some of the uh, runners who are the pace guides, and uh, people can run near or behind where that flag is. So it gives them some idea of uh, helping them, prov provided by the race, the, the pace guides, with a sort of a large uh, nylon flag uh, on some uh, suspended above their heads. It helps people gives them a two-hour yeah. goal or a two-and-a-half-hour yeah. goal. Exactly. You, got, you got somebody yeah. to hang on to. Yeah. It's a pay, pacemaker for the rest of us. Mm. So when do we start to turn back, uh, Jim, and uh, head towards the finish? It's uh, fairly late. Uh, 16 kilometers or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 15, 16 is the... The last bridge there. So about 44 minutes, another couple of minutes, and then they'll uh, start heading back towards the finish. Jeffrey dropping off a little bit there. As you predicted. Yeah. So I'd say the podium is getting settled right now between Stephen Kiprop, Bernard Camelli, and Felix Kibitok. Number one, number two, and number three. What a seeding job. <laughs> Somebody did a good job. I think it was Yana. Uh, as, a, as somebody who studies these things for a living, that yellow background with black lettering is just fabulous for reading on the TV screen. It's uh, often people come up with beautiful colors that look lovely uh, until there's those pace uh, signs that we were just trying to describe, not very well, but that's what they look like. And you follow one of those and follow that pacer and they'll usually put you within five or six seconds of what you're trying to do. Exactly. Beautiful shot of the river. Okay, 15K, 42.13. And that's like 59, 20 something, 22, something like that as a finish time. So. Right. Still our pacer with Caroline Kip Karui, and that's Andy Wacker from the US just ahead of her. He's going to get a shock when he turns around and looks who's behind him. <laughs> Maybe he can tag on. Yeah. Not a sign of any other woman no, in that no. shot we just saw. She looks like she's just inside herself, yeah. doing some yoga or something, yeah. some med meditation. Yeah. Saw her this morning as we were getting going to the bus to the start, and she gave me a big hug, and uh, she still hasn't given me half of her winnings from last year, which we had a bet about. That oh, if okay. she won, she had to give me half of her winnings. I'm I still see. waiting for the check. But, okay. Uh, well, it's a check check, so it's pretty yeah. slow. We have to wait for doping control yeah. to get all the results before you can get paid. Were you tested? Uh, no. 
Oh, see, that's 15, 15 kilometers for Yerka, 45, 20. He's uh, probably 63, 30 or something like that. So he's not... He's gotta, he's gotta pick it up a little yeah. bit. He's not gonna run... Uh, he's right around his best time, 63, 23. He's right, right around there. I don't think he's gonna break 63, but he might be close to his personal best. Who's your pick? I don't know. I think they all look good. Don't they? Yeah, I, I would agree. We might have two or three guys coming over the in the final sprint. Yeah. Menace Bridge. Nobody seems to be pushing at the moment to no. try and get away. Bernard is probably the one who's trying to be aggressive. But old saying in coaching, victory to the brave, Rick teaches the aggressor, so we'll see who gets aggressive. And we're talking 13 minutes of running left, so still still enough distance to... Uh, Felix Kibitak is just sitting. If there is any wind, it would be yeah. at their backs now, because yeah. they're heading back. Fairly good surface yeah. along there that... Uh, now remind me at the finish, Jim. They come down. They're coming down the river now, and then they cross the bridge at the end. They, yeah, they yeah. come under, past our hotel. Uh -huh. They go under the tunnel, yeah. come up to 19 kilometers. Then they have a stretch of of that uh, cobblestones, yeah. and they turn onto uh, the first bridge at 20k. Cross over to the other side. Come back to the Menace Bridge, the final bridge down off of that and back left turn to finish right yeah. where, where they started. Just have to run 21K and you yeah. get back where you were. There's one of our spectators trying to keep up with yeah. Caroline and not succeeding. No, you find out just how fast that is when you try and run alongside. It's, uh... That's why I don't try it. Yeah. Now, these people are just coming back towards the bridge now, yeah. I think. 11,500 people having a lovely morning run here in the beautiful city of Prague. Yeah, there's no reason to stay home today. No. They're, they're back close to our finishing yeah. point here. <coughs> well, it's 21K, and of course, you know, we're going to go fractionally over that to get the, uh, the half marathon distance. So probably not a course record today, Jim. I think that, uh, that record from... 2012 is still going to last. Not unless we get some brave runner here who's willing to. I think the danger is if you get aggressive and try and go, that the others just sit on you and out sprint you. So that's what they're worried about. Felix Kibitak taking a bit more interest. Some clown on a skateboard there trying to get pictures. Good ad for Adidas. And Sportissimo. That camera angle foreshortens the uh, yeah. distance between Showed Max us, and yeah. Jeffrey. Now's the time for them to really start to move if they've got anything in them. About nine minutes of running left. Yeah. Uh, less than three, about three kilometers to go. Yeah, a little less maybe. 
Oh, Caroline, get your cup. There you go. Going, to, going too fast to grab a drink. You yeah. Just got a splash in the mouth, and that was it. Yeah. There are no uh, yeah. elite drink tables for the, you know, yeah. for the half marathon. Just the water yeah. stops every two and a half k or so. So, uh, actually, they have water two and a half k, and then they have uh, sponges. Yeah. Just the three of them still. So our best prediction, unless the pace changes dramatically, is still going to be about 59.15, uh, something like that. So eight minutes of running now. Felix Kibitak, who sat in for a long time, suddenly took an interest about uh, two or three good. minutes ago, and now he's... He's starting to push the pace, and he's putting pressure on Stephen Kiprop, the pre-race favorite. Looks very good, surprisingly. Coming past our hotel, yeah. going under the uh, and into the into the tunnel. Yeah. Going into the tunnel's okay. It's coming out. Yes. Um, And then they do have some cobblestones yeah. for a couple hundred meters before they make that turn onto the bridge. Mm Hard to get oriented with this particular camera shot. Oh, there they are. Two, two, and a half, yeah. two and a half K to go. Yeah. Now we're in the tunnel. Look at the legs going. <laughs> Amazing. Just biomechanically, these guys are so efficient. You know, Amazing. No wasted movement and... Uh, no wasted just, flesh either. Yeah. Not carrying anything they don't have no. to. Up the slight incline as they exit the tunnel. Yes. Well, they didn't get rid of Stephen Kiprop there, no, so. He, he still looks threatening. Bernard Camelli is at 27.10 kil uh, for 10K. So you'd, uh, I don't know who, who has the best leg speed at the finish. Yeah. Pressure's on Stephen Kiprop right now to stay with it. Bernard Camelli pushing quite hard now, trying to get away. And that's putting pressure on guy in third place to Stephen Kiprop. And there's a couple of meters there that has started. A little bit of an opening. Yeah. Yeah, as I mentioned, Andy Wacker tried yeah. to hang on with Caroline there. That chain had drove me crazy, but uh, yeah. banging in your face like yeah. that. This pace has done a terrific job with this guy. He shows her where to go yeah. and what to do. And Okay, five minutes for the lead men. Well, they didn't get rid of Stephen Kipper up there. Thought that push by Bernard Camelli was going to get rid of him. Now we're on some cobbles. This is what you mentioned, Jim, this yes. stretch of cobbles. A couple hundred meters here yeah. before they turn on to the first bridge. But you see that surface is not that bad. No. Well, plus these guys barely touch the ground. That's <laughs> true. There's Yurka, he's yeah. going for it. He's putting what he's got on the line. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to be able to get under 103 or not, but he's certainly not leaving it on the course. He's 29 years old now, so. Yeah. Now or never. I 
seen him run many track races, and he yeah. he, he will get out kicked every time. Yeah. But he'll he'll set the pace for the whole oh, like five thousand. I love that camera shot. Just uh, three faces. It's, uh, yeah. Three Beautiful. faces of concentration. We're into racing now. Folks. Felix Kibitak nearest us just almost has a smile on his face. He just like he looks relaxed, yeah. doesn't he? There they go. They're coming up on 20K very shortly, in the middle of this bridge, I think. It's right there. We can see where the lead vehicle just crossed the timing mat. Twenty K, fifty six eighteen. So right on fifty nine twenty. Plus a kick, we gotta allow something for a kick. <laughs> Felix and Bernard are uh, that's the third time that Stephen Kiprop's gone under pressure. Lost so. a couple of meters. That was Felix Kibitok pushing around that corner who uh, stretched it out. We seem to be down to these two at this stage, Bernard Kamali and Felix Kibitok. A little downhill onto the last yeah. bridge, onto the menace, heading over the river for the last time. The it's going to be a fast last uh, kilometer. Well, I still don't know who you'd uh, bet on here. Felix looks more comfortable. Felix but looks... But I think that's just his style. He's yes, a yes. relaxed runner. Great shot there from across the river. The motor in now, that's put some distance on Stephen Kiprop. He'd, he's under pressure to try and close that gap. I think he's... he's yeah. In his mind, he's third place. Yeah. Okay, Bernard Camelli now, the big push. There he goes. Over the bridge and back towards where we are at the finish line. Okay. A minute of running left, about. Over the river and through the woods. Grandmother's house we go. Bernard Camelli trying as hard as he can and finally some stress appearing on Felix Kibitok's face. Uh, just two or three meters, it's probably enough at this stage. Yeah. Yeah, because they turn that corner and yeah. They can see the finish. Yeah, 21K. There's 21K, so nearly at the finish. Felix trying to close that gap, but I don't think he can. No, he doesn't have the kick. Yeah. Onto the matting, on the red mats, and into the finish. I think Felix, uh, Bernard Camelli repeats low. as champ. 59 away. Very good. Very fast last tank, last uh, kilometer there. Absolutely. Stephen Kiprop, a Still very good under third. 50, 59, 20, yeah. under 50. Three guys under 59, 20. <laughs> well, I'm pleased because my pace is for London next month. Uh, looking in great shape. Their front group paces, Felix <laughs> Kibitak and Stephen Kiprop. There. Good. You know they've got it in them. Yeah. It's Jeffrey. I don't think he's going to break uh, no. an no. hour. No. It's just outside, and Henry Rona will be just outside, but there'll be 60 something. Yeah. Under 61. Yeah. So now the interest is if Yuri Homolac can run a personal best time. There comes Jeffrey. 
It's his best time this year. He's only run 62.20 this year, so he'll be happy with that. His best is 59.50, so. One hour and 30. Yeah. One hour 28. Yeah, he'll be happy with that. And Henry, Henry Rono. One hour six, and 35. And a personal best by 65 seconds. <laughs> a very good run by Henry Rono there. Here's Moses, our early uh, uh, leader. Ugandan. 61.37 personal best. He's got that. He's got that. I think that he's going to break that. Yeah. He may not break 61, but. Oh, yeah, he just did. Just under tw under 61. So good results. Very good results on a great day for running. Oh, here's Moses. Sorry, I misidentified. That's a different Moses. 61. Moses Kibet was in already. That was Moses Kamai who just finished. Yeah. yeah. It's Abel Chumba, I who I thought would run better than I this. I did too. Yeah. I absolutely did. Uh, Eritrean Johannes Gebregurgis just finished. I think when we see the final results, we'll see how many and, uh, guys just. What are uh, your feelings, emotion about oh. the new PB? Uh, I'm happy. Uh, I have a new PB today. I struggle. I train hard uh, to be to see that I have this year. I have good PB. Uh, was it uh, harder this year than uh, last year? Uh, I see this year I have uh, uh, good pace makers uh, to doing well because we're training together uh, and I believe she makes. What about the finish? Uh, did it help you that you uh, knew the track? You know, you knew uh, when to attack. Uh, today I have a uh, good uh, my athletes. He assist me a lot. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Here's Yuri Homolach. I think he's outside his personal yeah, best. Yeah, unfortunately. Not going to get his 102. He's, no, he's got to cross no, the bridge, yeah, so he's yeah. probably closer to 104. 104. Mm. It's a shame. I think he's. Uh, I think he's probably got uh, first check runner there. Yeah. See one of the Ukraine guys behind him. I yeah, think. that's uh, Olafarenko in the black vest back there. Mm. Ihor Olafarenko. One oh three fifty ish. Closer to uh, 104. Yeah. Hopefully he can just dip under there. Very close. Not quite. He's trying. No, didn't make it. Disappointed. Yeah. I'm sure. Felix Bohr, the Frenchman. Followed by Igor Olafarenko. Ukraine. One of the projects that uh, Carlo has instituted is to use the regionals. 5907, 59.08, 59.20, 59.22. Six guys under 61 there, which is very good running. And here's our ladies leader. She's going to run, we were saying, 65.20 or something like that. Pace had dropped off to give her a moment of glory, which is great. Maybe a bit outside 65.20 now. Yeah. She's but still a terrific run. So you... 
This is the woman who wasn't supposed to be in shape, uh, right, we were told. Right. Yeah. yeah, we were told yeah. that. Should be under under 106. Yes. Great performance by Carolyn. There's Lona. Yeah, and she's Excellent. running. She's going to run. PR, PR for her. Yeah, she's going to run. Her best is 66.40, and she's going to break that comfortably. So yeah. a great our Israeli runner. She's very happy with that. 66.09. Yeah, big smile. She's happy with that. Lydia? Lydia, yes. She looks like she's going to be third. So, uh, and her best is 69.25. She's, she's well uh, under that. Yeah. Also one of my paces in London. Shortly. Is she? Yes. So I'm, I'm pleased with the way the guys have Well, today. they, they yeah. all knew that you yeah. were going to be yeah, here. They knew I was they, watching. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That was yeah. a big uh, concern. Yeah. It was so this will be a... I think Lydia's going to make the podium in third place and, uh, and run a personal best. Yeah, so, by maybe two minutes yeah. or so. Yeah. That number on the screen in red is the gap back from when the first man finished, which is interesting but irrelevant in the women's race. Yeah. Just behind David Voss, yeah. one of the... First three checks, I uh -huh. believe. I'm sure we'll stay with the television broadcast to show the uh, actual award ceremonies shortly. Yes. That's the plan. Yeah, it's David Vass. He seems happy. But, uh, 107, I think. The Lydia right Matatai should be more happy because yeah. she's just run a two minute and a half PA personal best, a great run. And here's Lucy in fourth. This is Lucy Chariot. We didn't see Fancy again. Fancy just wasn't on today. Something, just not right. something was yeah. wrong. Something was definitely yeah. wrong. Lucy Chariot's best time, 67.23, so she's outside that, but uh, still a good performance. 108 is uh, nothing to shake a stick at. That's yes. very good. I think we've been spoiled the last couple of years. Yeah. The women have all of a sudden really upped the ante uh -huh. considerably. This tree has Gebri from uh, now Spain, originally Ethiopia. She's probably, what, sixth or something? I've lost count now, Jim. Uh, fifth, yeah. I think. of company on the bridge a lot yeah. of spectators so. it's a great place to stand uh, and watch for your family and friends as they're going out and over the bridge and watch the elites finish they come across this bridge yeah. a couple times yeah. so you get to see them twice at least these people trying as hard as they can to break one hour and ten minutes, and uh, it's a nice goal. Watch that guy, five five oh five. It's very important to him. Can he get it? You right on the nose. Uh, don't know if, don't know what his best was before, but that was important to him to try and run under seventy. Uh, Spanish lady with. 
good performance. Robert Mick. Yeah, he did not have a good day. No. I think he expected a good deal more. Yeah. Even when you get to that last corner and you have to cross the bridge, it's still quite a distance there to yeah. the finish line. You know, you're past 20K, so it seems like it's not going to be that much. Yeah. But One of the pacemakers. Yeah. There's Diane Nakuri coming in. Yeah, one of Newly a Burundian Olympian and new American citizen. Here comes Amy Craig. Not a great day for her either. Well, as far as time goes, I'm not sure what happened out there. Well, it may be just part of a longer process that she's working That's on with possible. a coach. To, of, as you mentioned earlier, next year is the important one. You know, make a make another Olympic team. Uh, yeah. she's try and do well in the Olympics in Tokyo next year, which is going to be interesting because it's going to be very hot, and they're talking of starting at like six or six thirty in the morning to try and avoid some of the heat and humidity in Tokyo. But, She doesn't like those cobbles very much there. No. That was Maybe she had some problems, but you know, she uh, she should have been five minutes faster, I think. Well, we haven't seen Fancy Chematai in I'm not the night. Sure I'm wondering if she dropped out because she. Uh, unless the cameras just didn't pick her up, we'll see by the results later, but. Uh, working hard to get to that yeah. finish. Yeah, she'll be 113 and a half, something like that. She yeah, won't be happy with that. Yeah. Five minutes off her personal yeah. best or slower than her personal best. Yeah, not, not a good, not a good day for her. Oh, we've already got the uh, presentations going on. Bernard Camelli, our champion. Felix Kibitok, second today and third. Stephen Kiprop. For those uh, white singlets. There they are, <laughs> the white singlets team. I don't know how big that car must be, but it's a hell of a big car, Jim. It's a huge car, yeah. huge car. Volkswagen, one of the sponsors and... They've been a major sponsor for 20 years. Yeah, and the name sponsor for the for Volkswagen the Prague Marathon. And be a bit of a surprise, there's uh, Stephen Kiprop getting his medal. We'll hear the Kenyan national anthem. Again. Not for the, not for the first time. No. Felix Kibitak ran very well. Bernard Camelli repeating as our champion. A great performance. And the personal best. Yeah. Oh, and these are the gifts that are worth taking home to put your uh, M&Ms or Smarties into. Uh, <laughs> best Bohemian glass, I believe. Yes, it is. And Look at the, uh, yeah. the boys pack it up for them and, and yeah. uh, carry it ca carefully on the plane. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful.
Did you get any Bohemian? No, I'm. Uh, oh, here we go. Kenyan national anthem as predicted. Three together, don't drop the glass, don't boys. Break your crystal. They could be brothers, couldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Matching outfits. Their mom dresses on my life. Beautiful shot of the castle and the Cathedral. I expect ne next we'll have the ladies' uh, presentation. Yes. These guys are still motoring along at a pretty good pace yeah. here. I suspect that the temperature has gone up. It looks like the, some of the people are getting warm. That's a good, cool outfit to mm -hmm. wear. It's funny when you work on an event, Jim, and you see all the, what it takes to put on an event, and then afterwards it all gets cleaned up, and it's, what happened? You know, the streets yeah, exactly. are clean again, and it's all disappeared. Yeah, you come down here tomorrow morning, yeah. and there's nothing. And it takes an army of people to put on an event like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. The, the whole team from Run Check and then the... Uh, That's a small part of it, though, really. Yeah. It's the volunteers that, yeah. that make these things go. Mm -hmm. Any big race, as I'm sure yeah. you know from London and yeah. I know from Honolulu, it's, it's very dependent on the, the community. These guys got a bit of a distance to go. The people will be finishing for another oh, a couple of hours, probably. Sure. I don't know if there's a time limit on the race, Jim. If they, if they I, there's a two hour and 40 minute uh, okay. banners there, but I think the time is three and a half or somewhere okay. around there. Yeah. Don't quote me. No. You seldom do anyway, but. <laughs> I'm like Boswell to your Dr. Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> I just write it down for oh, posterity. Okay. Good, yeah. good, good. Look at these views. Yeah, it's a nice shot. That's onto the Charles Bridge and some of the sculptures and. Uh, the pedestrians, the yep. tourists for the most part, walking over to Kampai. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of Carolyn winning again, and I expect that's going to be our introduction to the uh, women's uh, presentations. She Carolyn Chepkowicz Kipkirui. She did her job, and she did it yeah. well. Look at those times. 105, Four 106. women under. 109. 
Even the 10th place woman from Lithuania, Lena Kiriluk, ran a two minute personal best today. So Three Americans in yeah. the top 10. Yeah. But I think they were, all three of them, disappointed with their times. Yeah. That looks like a nice little amble up there to the cathedral. And it you, is, but it's yeah. uphill. Yeah. It is. And make you uh, breathe a bit going up that hill. Yeah. But it's nice to see. Here we go. See. Lydia Matatai, our third place finisher. Looks serious. Smile, smile, Lydia. Personal best for her, I believe. Yeah, big personal best for Lena Salpeter today. So we had a couple of defending champions come back yeah. and show why they won last yeah. year. Carolyn was second in the uh, half marathon last year and oh, won yeah. the 10K. So. And for a change, well, I don't know. I hope they know where the, to find the Kazakhstan national anthem because Carolyn is now from Kazakhstan. That's right. Uh, I doubt if they found it. Ah. They have a Kazakh flag, though. Ah, good. Okay. They could pick it up from uh, from the Tour de France because yeah. there's that uh, racing team from Kazakh. Kazakhstan. Yeah, Astana. Yeah. yeah. The uh, better than the New York City half marathon recently when they tried to give the wrong flag to the uh, the f winner. It's an Eritrean and an Ethiopian coming in and they gave the wrong flag, to, which tends uh, to upset those guys from that part of the world. Yeah, and they yeah. they don't particularly well. They're getting along better yeah. now. They find recently signed a okay. peace treaty. I bet Carolyn doesn't know the words to this. No. Not a chance. Yeah. She's only recently joined the team yeah. officially. Very good. So, well done I, to. I think there's a good chance that that was the yeah. Kazakhstan. And well done to Diane Rybachenko there, who's helping everybody. She made sure we had the right national anthems. And personally, I think we need more good Italian runners because I love the Italian national anthem. That's oh, a okay. great sing-along song. <laughs> okay. Well, we had a couple of Italians today, but they weren't amongst the top ones. Yeah. A little review of the day. There's our Polish sign yeah. again, we, or what we think is a Polish sign. Bye. Have a nice run.
a bit late for Christmas. Running for those who cannot run for themselves. Dirk and Andy, neither one of whom had what they would hope for. And there's the boys. Bernard had to work hard for that finish. Beautiful day in a beautiful city. Yeah. Great view of the Charles Bridge there and all the statues. It'll be full of tourists now walking across. And you'll see those boats down below yeah. are also full of tourists. Yeah. Nice cruise on the river for a couple hours. Yeah, there's a way to go around that uh, weir that's just in front of them. I think they, the I don't right know if they side. turn around. I don't, I, I've never... I, Some I turn think. in front of the... Yeah, they go through the locks. <laughs> 